Okay. All right. Let me uh, get your attention, please. All right. So let's do an example here. All right. Um, so we'll say, we'll try a, a silly example. Okay. Let's say we've got uh, kind of a big uh, bathtub full of M&Ms. Somebody filled their uh, tub with M&Ms. This is a poor use of money, but um, could be done if you want. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we've got a tub full of M&Ms. Okay. And, uh, and someone says... Uh, Um, twenty-five percent of the M and M's in the tub are green. Okay, so someone claims You feel like, well, that's too much. Okay, I don't think it's 25%. So, um, so uh, you know, you know, you feel that the actual proportion is less than that. So let's say. Um, Okay, so let's say you, uh, you decide to take a random sample of 200 M&Ms, okay? So we're not, gonna, um, we're not gonna bother trying to count all the M&Ms in the tub. We're just gonna take a sample of 200 M&Ms out of the tub. And uh, okay, and you count count uh, the number of M and M's. You count a total of thirty-seven green M and M's. Okay, you get thirty-seven green M and M's. All right. So, does your sample provide evidence that the tub has less than uh, has less than twenty five percent? Green M and M's. Yeah. Question. I'm guessing that the tub has more than two thousand M and M's, right? Yeah. Yeah. The tub has more than two thousand M and M's. So yeah, we we should check conditions and all of that. Okay. All right. So this is uh, this is what we have. So we don't want to count all of the M and M's. There's probably you know ten thousand M and M's or something. That's it. It's an entire tub full of M&Ms. There's a whole bunch. We don't want to count them all. We're just going to take a scoop of 200 M&Ms. When we count those, we get 37 green M&Ms. Is that going to convince us that the tub is thus less than 25% green? Okay, so, well, we're going to take a look. Okay, so we're going to do step one, which is our hypotheses. What is our null hypothesis? We want to test this claim. So the null hypothesis is always going to be in the form p is equal to some number. What's that some number we're going to put in here? 0.25. We want to know, is it 25%? And then the alternative, OK, how is our question written here? Does your sample provide evidence that the tub has less than 25% green M&Ms? Our alternative will be what? 
P is less than 0.25, okay? These two things are identical, except the null has an equal sign always, and then the alternative will have something else, and in this case, less than sign. Okay, um, so that's step one. Step two is uh, our prep step. I'll just go ahead and tell you that um, it's a random sample, okay? So we'll just say conditions are met, all right? You could go through and, uh, and just make sure, but uh, conditions are met, and alpha is not specified, so what alpha are we going to use? 0 0.05, okay? Our, will be our significance level. Okay, and then so now we're going to do our calculations. Step three, our calculations. Okay, so the first part in our calculations is getting our standard error. Our standard error is the square root of P0 times 1 minus P0 divided by N. What is P0? 0 0.25. And what is N? 200. 200. Okay. So our standard error, 0.25 times 1 minus 0.25 divided by 200 inside the square root. So we're going to do uh, 0.25 times 1 minus 0.25 divided by 200, and we get 0 0.0306186. That's our standard error. The next part is getting our test statistic, which is our observed minus the expected divided by the standard error, or in our case, we get a z-score. We're going to have p hat minus P0 divided by our standard error. What's our P hat? P hat is our sample proportion, right? So we have 37 divided by 200, right? So that's going to be what? 0.185? Um, or, you know, if, if you didn't, you can always just punch it into your calculator, right? So up here I'm going to have. Uh, 37 divided by 2, whoops, 37 over 200, and then we're going to subtract off 0.25, and I'm going to plug in the answer from before, 0 0.0306186, okay, and we get this, and we get uh, negative 2.12. So if I do 0 0.185 minus 0 0.25 divided by 0.0306186, you should get negative 2.12. Is, is that what we get? Okay. Here, I'll just, I'll just verify that this is indeed what we get. 0.185 minus 0.25 divided by 0.03086186. Yeah, negative 2.12. Okay, so this is my z-score. So far so good? Okay, and now we're going to look up our z-score to get our p-value. p-value from table, okay. So what does my alternative have? Alternative has what, which sign? Has less than sign. So our p-value is our area to what? It is area to the left of z. Okay, so in this case... I'm going to look up negative 2.12 and find the area to the left of z. Okay, and what, what's this? 0 0.0170. Yeah, so I look up negative uh, 2.12 and I get 0 0.0170. Area to the left of z equal to negative 2.12 is 0 0.0170. So my p-value is 0 0.0170. Is that okay? All right. 
Yes, so here's our p-value. Okay, and so our conclusion, uh, I wanna make sure everyone has this down before I flip to the next slide. Okay, so step four is our conclusion. We compare our p-value to alpha. Okay, so we have 0 0.0170 versus 0 0.05. This is less. So our p-value is less than alpha. <coughs> so what does that mean? What do we do? So we reject the null hypothesis. This means our data was significantly different from what we expected. What we expect under the null hypothesis, okay? Or in other words, we would say, you know, our data provides evidence that the tub has less than 25% green M&Ms. Well, it, 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 it doesn't really matter because the, the null hy we're just testing the null hypothesis. We have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis, whether the null hypothesis is the suggestion of our friend or not. Okay, so we, are, we have evidence that the tub has less than 25% green M&Ms. Okay, so even though we didn't look at the entire, we didn't look at every single m and in the entire bathtub, we took a sample, a random sample of 200 M&Ms. When we counted it up, it was enough to convince us that the tub is indeed not 25% M&Ms. Okay. Is, uh, is this process okay? All right, so next week you can uh, expect to see a problem like this in your quiz, and you'll have to uh, work through that. Um... Let's see, okay. So then we have hypothesis tests. So this is another case. Hypothesis tests for uh, proportions with two samples. Okay. And the way um, these hypothesis tests work Okay, the scenario here is, um, so before we just said, you know, we had some number, 20, the bathtub is 25% green, or, you know, the coin is going to land 50% heads. Um, and so we had some proportion in mind. Over here, we're just taking two samples. We don't have a spec specified proportion value, but we're just taking two samples, and we're asking, do the respective populations, do they have the same proportion, okay? So maybe I take, um, we can ask, you know, is the proportion of left-handed males, is that the same as the proportion of left-handed females, okay? So maybe I take a sample of men, a sample of women, and I find out what per percentage of, uh, in our sample ha are left-handed for the men, what percentage uh, for the women are left-handed, okay? And we're not going to get exactly the same number, but the question is, are those two values significantly different enough to say that the populations are different, or are they not different enough to say that the populations are different? Okay, or we could say, you know, um, our, if we took a sample of people from California and we asked, you know, are you going to vote for this person, and we can look at this proportion. And we take a sample of people from, I don't know, Nebraska, and we say, are you going to vote for this person? Okay. 
um, you're not going to get the same number necessarily. I Maybe mean, you could, but you're probably going to get different numbers. And then the question is, are those are they different enough for you to say um, the entire state populations are different, or you know maybe they're similar, and then maybe you know maybe one's fifty-one percent and the other one's fifty-two percent, and then it says well that's not enough for us to say that the states are different, okay? And we don't know. Yeah. Everything we've been learning about is <laughs> like when you do a <laughs> bell curve mm -hmm. is the fact that you take in all the samples and they usually yeah so so all of this is based because everything we're doing is based on samples right we're not dealing with the entire population we're dealing with samples so we have to look at sampling distributions okay we're looking at the properties of samples based on sampling distributions and the actual distribution of a sampling distribution is a little bit complicated but because of the central limit theorem, we're saying the, the normal distribution works well enough, okay? And that's why everything looks like a bell curve, because we're saying, according to the central limit theorem, the normal distribution is a good approximation for what, we, what, what is truly going on. The true process is a little bit more complicated, but the normal distribution for, you know, for almost all intents and purposes in our class is good enough, as long as these conditions are met. And so hypothesis testing is assuming it's yes. normal. Yes, yes. Hypothesis testing, um, at least what we've learned in this class, assumes that the normal distribution works. That's why step two says check those conditions, okay? Because everything's kind of under the assumption that the central limit theorem, which says the normal distribution works, uh, is true. Okay. okay. All right, so hypothesis test for proportions with two samples. So um, over here, you know, we take two samples and we get two sample proportions. Okay, and those will be p hat one and p hat two. Okay, so we get two sample proportions. Those sample proportions are probably not going to be exactly the same. Okay. And so the question is, if they're different, does that mean the respective population proportions, P1 and P2, are those then different, or is it possible that they're still the same, okay? If P hat 1 and P hat 2 are different, does that mean the populations have different proportions. P1 and P2 are different. OK. And so in this process, we're going to have the same four steps. Are different? Wait, who? Sorry. If p hat 1 and p hat 2 uh, oh, are different, sorry. You know, so. I don't judge. It's uh, it's, <laughs> it's uh, when you talk and you write at the same time, it's like your hand wants to say the same thing or write the same thing that the as the words that are coming out of your mouth, and so you know you talk faster than you write, and so I'll, I'll be talking while I'm writing, and then my hand will just skip the words in order to keep up with 
It's like, have you ever watched um, closed captioning on a live news feed? It always like fall behind, and then suddenly it just skips ahead to like <laughs> where it is, and you're like, oh, well, I guess uh, if I had it on mute, I wouldn't know that this entire paragraph was said, right? So. So if, yeah, okay, so if p hat 1 and p hat 2 are different, does that mean the populations have different proportions, meaning p1 and p2 are different? Okay. All right, so step one, hypotheses. Now, and, and I do appreciate you pointing out all of these things when my notes are going bad because um, I write the things on the board for you guys, right? And so it's not, it's not like I'm going to keep this for myself saying like, oh, I wonder what I wrote. Um, <laughs> So I want to make sure that it's, it's accurate for you guys. All right. So hypotheses. OK. So the hypotheses here is that the null hypothesis is that in the population, the two proportions, or the two pro populations have the same proportion. P1 and P2 are equal. That's the null hypothesis. This can also be written. as p1 minus p2 is equal to 0. It can also be written that way. And that's, I hope we can see that these two things are equivalent. Okay. All right, and then so the alternative hypothesis, uh, again, is identical to the null, except the equal sign is replaced with something else. So the alternative hypothesis will be P1 is not equal to P2, or uh, the alternative will be P1 is greater than P2, or the alternative will say P1 is less than P2. Okay, Or conversely, it can also be written as P1 minus P2 not equal to 0, P1 minus P2 greater than 0, p1 minus p2, less than 0. But your null hypothesis will always be that they're equal, because it always has an equal sign. Okay, do we get all that? <laughs> OK. And uh, I should. Uh... <laughs> All right. And then uh, step two, we there should be a game which is like um, name that song based on like the uh, the ringtone after like a panic shutdown within like two seconds of it starting. Um, <laughs> And then, <laughs> all right, so step two uh, is same. Um, you, you know, you check your conditions, same as before. And then, um, you know, identify alpha or, you know, identify or select alpha. So that's, that's the same as before, OK? Step three are your calculations. Okay, and the calculations, basically you have the same three steps, but you also have kind of a, a step zero, okay? So I'll call this uh, step three zero, which is find, um, find the overall p hat. It's not the average of the two p hats, but it's the combined you take x1 plus x2, you take the total number of successes divided by the total um, number of observations. Okay, So it's a little bit different. It's not just um, p hat 1 average with p hat 2. Uh, that only works if the two samples are the exact same size. But you do something, you know, so x1 is, you know, successes in uh, sample 1.
x2 will be successes in sample 2. And again, the label sample, I mean, the label success is an arbitrary label. Um, and this is, you know, sample size 1, sample size 2. Okay, so you find your overall p hat. Okay, and then step 3a will be your standard error. Standard error is slightly ugly formula. There's nothing we can do about it. It's just this is the formula. And that's going to be p hat times 1 minus p hat times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. OK? No, that's it. Inside the square root. OK? p hat times 1 minus p hat. Keeping in mind that this p hat is the overall p hat from the previous step. OK? That's your standard error. All right. it's, it's not too terrible, okay? And then, uh, then you get your test statistic, okay? And this is going to be, um, you know, the difference between the observed minus the expected divided by the standard error. And in our case, it's going to be the z-score, and we're going to observe p hat one. versus p hat 2, and we're going to divide by the standard error, okay? So if, if the null hypothesis were true, right, the two proportions should be identical. So if we see, if we observe one p hat, we would expect the other p hat to be the same, right? So p hat 1 minus p hat 2, or we would expect that this difference is 0, um, and we're going to divide that by the standard error, okay? And then once you get your z-score, you look up z in the table to get um, the p-value. And the rules here are the same as before, meaning you look at the alternative hypothesis to decide whether you want the left or the right or two times the tail area. Same, same rules as before. And I, I don't need to rewrite those, right? Use the same rules as before. Okay, look at the alternative to decide whether to use the area to the left, right, or two times the tail. Okay, and then step four will be your conclusions, and uh, The test statistic is your z, okay? So that yeah, mean, like what is the abbreviation part? Yeah, observed minus expected divided by standard error, okay? I mean, that, that's kind of the rule for all the test statistics, right? Because what we're doing is we're comparing the reality, the observed versus the expected, and we want to know is, are they similar or are they different? Okay. Yeah. And then to decide whether they're similar or different is a depends on our standard error, okay? And if you look at the standard error, the standard error depends on your sample sizes and the proportions observed in them. Yeah? Why does the standard error here, the formula looks so different? Uh, because we're dealing with two samples. Uh, I'm going to just <laughs> say that, okay? okay? So when you're dealing with one sample, um, that's, that's how it works. When you're dealing with two samples, the, um, the, the rules get complicated, and uh, it's a long answer. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the sampling distribution when you're dealing with two samples is a little bit, a little bit messier, and uh, so we, we end up getting this. Okay. Yeah. So in the success and failures, is it like the other uh, ten successes? During the checking conditions part, yeah. So you have now have two samples, and you want to make sure you have 10 successes and 10 failures in sample one, and you have 10 successes and 10 failures in sample two. Okay. Uh, so.
So you have, you know, you have two samples to check and then two respective populations to check. You want to make sure everything clears out there. Okay. All right. So far, so good. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right, and then step four um, is make your conclusions. Okay, and, and this is very similar as before. So if your p-value is greater than alpha, this means we do not reject the null hypothesis. And that basically means, um, you know, same type of thing as before, but at this point we do not have evidence to say that um, the two populations have different proportions. Okay. And on the other hand, if the p-value as less than alpha, then that means we reject the null hypothesis, and then we'd say we have evidence to say that, uh, you know, the proportion in population one is greater or less than the proportion in population two. different, greater, or less than the proportion of whatever we're talking about. And population two. So let's uh, do an example, and then we'll uh, probably run out of time. <laughs> or we'll be done there. OK. Got all this? Take your pictures. Great. OK. All right, so we'll, you know, we'll pretend that, uh, let's say, um, we'll imagine, pretend there's candidate A. And we'll say, um, you know, do does California or do California and Texas have different proportions of people that support candidate A? Kind of like the truck problem. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like the truck problem, but here. Mm -hmm. Different proportions of people who candidate A. So we'll pretend this is 2020, so this is not in the future election. <laughs> All right, so, um, okay, and then so we'll just make some numbers up here. So let's say, um, you know, we've got random samples, okay. We didn't have that much money. We couldn't su survey that many people. So you know, let's say we have um, a random sample of 100 Californians. Okay, and out of that 100, we'll say um, 52 support uh, candidate A. All right. And then uh, we survey uh, random, uh, we'll do a different number. We'll say 80 people from Texas, OK? And in Texas, maybe, um, I don't know, what's a good number here? 34. 
support candidate A. Okay. All right, and then we'll say do our samples, or does our data provide evidence that the proportion of supported supporters proportion of supporters are different in the two states. And so this is what we want to want to answer. Okay, and I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you right now that you know with a sample of 100 and a sample of 80, unless the proportions are vastly different, they're probably not big enough to make these kinds of conclusions. But but we'll see the uh, the math kind of point that out. Okay, so we're going to start off with our hypotheses. Okay, so what should our hypotheses be? So our null hypothesis is going to be P1 is equal to P2, okay? And then our alternative, here it says, are they different, okay? So we're not saying we're expecting more or less in California or something like that. We're just saying, are they different? Is California and Texas, are they different, okay? So we're gonna just have P1 is not equal to P2. In, in another thing, it might you might ask, you know, do we have evidence that there are more people in California who support this candidate than the proportion of people in Texas who support that candidate? Okay, so that's our alternative. Okay, um, we would check our conditions, and I'll just tell you conditions are met. Okay, you have at least ten supporters and at least ten who don't support in in both cases. Um, you know, if you look at the populations of California and Texas, it's more than 10 times their sample and things like that. And they're both random, so, so we're good. Okay, conditions met. And we'll use alpha equal to 0.05. Okay, so we'll do our calculations here. So first, our first step is to get our p hat overall. Overall p hat will be x1 plus x2 divided by n1 plus n2. So in this case, we're going to do 52 plus 34, the total number of supporters for candidate A, divided by um, the total number of people we surveyed. Okay, and so this, we have 52 plus 34, that's 86 people out of 180. Uh, and that's 0 0.4777. So I'll just round off to 0.4778, but probably in my calculator I, I would keep more decimal places. Okay, so that's p hat. Then we're going to get our standard error. Standard error is p hat times 1 minus p hat over 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. 0.4778 times 1 minus 0.4778 times 1 over 100 plus 1 over 80. Can you guys read that? Okay, and when I do these calculations, <coughs> sorry. Okay, so what do I have? I have 86 divided by 180, okay. And so I'm going to have square root of answer times that number 1 minus the answer times 1 over 100 plus 1 over 80. Close parentheses, okay. And I get 0.074925. That's my standard error. Okay, and then um, 
So moving on, did I flip too quickly there? No, we're okay. So we have p hat one minus p hat two divided by our standard error, okay? So p hat one is, um, what did I have, 52 over 100, is that right? Uh, basically proportion in sample one and then sample two was I think 34 out of 80. Okay, and then we're gonna divide by our standard error which was 0.07492588 nine, so point oh seven four I uh, forget. Yeah. Oh, four nine two two five eight nine. Okay. Alright, and then so up top I would have point five two minus thirty four over eighty is point four two five divided by all this. So we'll uh, uh, 0.52 minus 0.425 divided by that, and I get 1.27, a z-score of 1.27. This is my z-score. All right, and then so our step or I'm sorry, so step 3C is to get our p-value. Okay, so our alternative has a not equal sign, so this means our p-value will be two times our tail area. Okay, and our tail area is the area to the right of a positive z. So basically what, you know, what our picture looks like is we got this normal curve. We're going out to 1.27. We're going to find the area to the right. And basically, um, we're multiplying that by 2. So we're getting basically the same as the area to the left of negative 1.27. And we're getting both sides. So I look up, you know, 1.27 and I get uh, 0.8980. So this area is going to be 1 minus 0 0.8980, and I get 0 0.1020, I think. 1 minus 0 0.8980. What, was it, what did I say? I have it right? Yeah, 0 0.8980, okay. And so I have 0 0.102, and my p-value is two times that, okay? So the p-value is equal to 2 times 0 0.102. So I do 0 0.102 times 2, and this gives me 0 0.204. So my p-value is 0 0.204. Okay. Yeah, I know it's a end of a long lecture here. All right, so just hang in there. All right, I'm hoping this is okay. You can always review this and, uh, and it, it should make sense, all right? And then, um, okay, so now we're gonna make our conclusion. Our p-value is 0 0.204. So what do we conclude? Yeah, so our p-value is 0 0.204, and so that is greater than 0 0.05, which is our alpha. So we have p-value is greater than alpha, this means we do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, and what we say is that um, our data does not provide evidence that the uh, populations of California and Texas have different proportions of candidate A supporters. Okay. It just means we don't have data to say that they're different. It doesn't prove that they are the same, that they have the same proportion, 
It's just, you know, you surveyed 100 people in California, you surveyed 80 people in Texas. At this point, it's not enough to say that the respective populations are different. Okay. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to just write note. This does not mean that California and Texas have the same proportion of supporters. It just means the proportions are not, um, it just means there's not data to say that they are different. Perhaps if you collected more data, you would find that they are different. Perhaps if you collected more data, you would still come to the conclusion that there isn't data to say that they're different. Okay? And we would never actually be able to collect enough information to say that we have data to say that they are the same. Okay? Um, you can never actually prove that the null hypothesis is true. That's just the way things are. We can only say, um, you know, the data, you know, your reality and the expectation may always be similar, but it doesn't necessarily prove, just because the reality and expectation are always similar, doesn't prove that your beliefs are 100% true, right? So, um, okay, so that's what we have. And uh, we'll end there. We'll see you guys uh, next week.